There it is. All right. Drew's Daily Dose is back in action. Uh, first episode after having my cousin, Jay Biggs, or as my other cousin Neek used to call him, Jay Biggity the White Niggity, <laughs> um, on the podcast. Phenomenal episodes. Amazing. We had fun doing them. And, uh, yeah, first episode back since, uh, those amazing ones. And this time, I'm just going to jump right into it. I want to talk about, drum roll, damn it, I needed a drum roll right there. I want to talk about Jim Mother Carey and how Mother Woke he is. You know, because he, man, he is, it's like he gets it. I don't know what he's doing, because he had this bizarre interview on uh, some kind of red carpet event or for some art festival or something, and uh, he freaked out the E lady, the the lady that was interviewing for the E channel, and um, and it was really, a lot of people called it strange. They said he was, like, kind of wacky and out there. I mean, he's always been a wacky and out there guy. But he's re- very, 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 and really, really intelligent. And, uh, you know, he just, he studies a lot of stuff. And and uh, he's been giving these interviews about his uh, documentary that he made with, uh, it's called Jim and Andy, I think. Yeah, Jim and Andy, or Andy and Jim. No, I think it's Jim and Andy. And I can't wait to watch it. I don't know if it's out yet. Um, It's like an independent film kind of thing. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, So, so yeah, that's going to be a good one. I really can't wait to watch that. Because he played Andy Kaufman in the 1999 film Man on the Moon. Um phenomenal film one of his best i think in my opinion and uh but anyway my point is jim carrey just really really gets it right now like he's just the things he's saying is just waking me up and it's making me just and i don't know what he like if he's doing this i think yeah he's like doing this to like wake people up but i don't know if he's just doing it because he's like trying to, I don't know, I, I heard different theories, you know, I heard one theory that he's just doing all this stuff to, uh, or I guess that interview particularly was him playing a character because he's got some kind of show on Showtime. I, I know he's got that show on Showtime about the stand-up comics and stuff, really great show, I watched the first episode. I don't know if I finished it, but I started watching it. It's really good. And, uh, but, um, uh, I think that, I don't know. I think that's bullshit. I think it's just Jim being Jim and, and I can't even explain like how he explains it, like the stuff he's been explaining. So I am going to play a couple of clips. I got to, you know, I got to share them on here. It's only right. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I can't wait to share him on here. Because, like, he talks about, like, how he... I'm not even going to... Because I'll butcher the shit out of it. Let me see if I could just pull it up and play these clips um, of Jim Carrey's interviews. Only a couple of minutes. Or one of them's a couple of minutes. The other one's, like, five minutes max, I think. But it's just Jim just... You know, it's a visionary stream of consciousness. As I always say, I have that. But he truly, this is a stream of consciousness. Like, for real. No bullshit. And uh, Jim just really gets it. He truly does. I'm going to see if I can play it. I hope it sounds okay. Um, I'm going to see if I can uh, play it to where it's really loud and you guys can really hear it. Um, excuse me, but, uh, if not, I'll just, 
I'll just play it on the next episode or something, because I don't really have time to... I kind of just jumped right into this episode of Drew's, Drew's Daily Dose. So, let me see. Uh, here it is. I found it. Now, let's just hope it sounds okay. Okay, this one is the five-minute one. And I'm going to bump that volume up. All right. Okay. Right. Run that back. Run that back one time. Perfect. Okay. Volume all the way up. Good evening and welcome to my side. Here it is. Now we're discussing Mandela effect in the life. Thanks for joining. How how did it impact you playing Andy Kaufman? I think that it it showed me that there were characters being played everywhere. That you know that as an actor you play characters and then. If you go deep enough into those characters, you realize that your own character is pretty thin to begin with, you know? And then you suddenly have this separation and go, well, who's Jim Carrey? Oh, he doesn't exist, actually. There's, there's just a, a relative manifestation of consciousness appearing, and, uh, and then somebody gave him a bunch of ideas. They gave him a name and a religion and a nationality. And he clustered those together into something that's supposed to be a personality. Mm. And it doesn't actually exist. There's, and none of that stuff, if you drill down, is real. Are you, is it fair to say that it pushed you into some kind of existential crisis? Duke State? Well, uh, I mean, yeah, it's kind of what it you're saying. It wasn't a crisis. It's an existential, uh, existential experiment, but that's been my life, you know. Mm. I believe that I, I got famous so that I could let go of fame. You know, and it's still happening, but not with me. What do you mean by that? What does that mean? I'm not a part of it anymore. There's no now you're not a part involved. of. You're not a part of what? No, I, like dressing happens, doing hair happens, uh, interviewing happens, and it happens without me, without without the idea of a me. You know what I'm saying? No. Uh, I I'm know not it's that a deep. weird little semantic jump, and it's not that far, but it's a universe apart from where most people uh, is live. this how okay so you were certainly at one time one of the most famous people on the planet no I'm still okay you're one still of one of the most people. famous people on the planet okay um, that is a that is a mind-bending experience and everybody deals with it in different ways and you also right. have a particular you're an artist I mean you have yeah. a particular personality so how wh where are you now on that continuum of like I'm not on the continuum there's no me. <laughs> There's just what's happening. And it's okay. not personal. So, like, the difference between money and my money is a gigantic chasm, you know? Uh, so that's how it feels. It feels like, you know, things are happening, you know? And they're going to happen whether I attach, attach myself as an ego to it or not, mm. you know? There's grooves that are cut pretty deep, you know, from my entire life, I still, there's still a, an energy that wants to be admired and wants to be clever. And there's still, uh, there's still an energy that wants to free people from concern. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and now it goes further. I want to, you know, kind of relate what this is to people so that maybe they can also kind of glimpse the abyss <laughs> of it sounds scary, but it's not. It's well, like, it, know, it's awfully profound for comedy. I mean, I mean it's, it's very profound for comedy, and comedy is often profound. And I think Andy Kaufman was he was profound, profound for, for sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was the great beyond, and the uh, great beyond to me, you know, I mean, it represents Andy it represents artists that are willing to go over the line into the unacceptable and the unexpected, but it also represents, uh, you know beyond the belief in the uh, Maya and in, uh, in the uh, in the virtual game grid we're watching and we're involved in you know does that make you um, a person who's more at peace with with yourself as you don't yeah. exist uh, I can put it in your own make construct. Me a person but does it make you does it make peace. you yeah, there's, there's peace and there's gratitude and there's wonder and there's excitement and all of it is happening uh, 
and rising out of nowhere and happening for no one. Hmm. Chris, do, what, how did you collaborate on the film? But <laughs> what, I got it. No, that's wonderful. But how do we market it? No, I didn't say that. I said, how did, how did the two of you work? First of all, I mean, he, Jim's in a particular place, right? And, my, and Headspace, so. He needs to drink. <laughs> Boom. Mind blown. And that, to me, is just <laughs> so amazing. Uh, if you want to watch the interview, because you kind of do need, like, his facial expression and stuff. Like, like you know, he laughs when he says a couple things. But um, this clip particularly is called Mandela Effect Documentary Dash The Rap dash jim carrey explains more about the matrix of reality and but that was a clip from the rap these people just they kind of ripped it off just like i'm doing <laughs> but uh so it was from a thing called the rap um and i think that took place yeah yeah that interview took place sometime in september it's now october uh, 2017, and, um, yeah, so, if you want to look that interview up, just type in The Rap, Jim Carrey, and that's rap with, uh, W-R-A-P, all caps, but these people kind of, like, stole it, I don't know what they're doing, it says Mandela Effect documentary, I, I guess they're making a documentary, and they stole that clip and put it in their documentary, I don't know, but anyhow, Watch that interview. It's effing amazing. There's a couple other interviews, too. That, and I, I'm not going to play all of them, you know. Because then that would be my whole show. <laughs> and then it'd be all... I mean, I guess I still could do that. But my point is... That was amazing. Everything he said. Everything. Every fucking minute. Every millisecond of what he was explaining right now was just truth i mean it was a thousand million percent truth and uh this one's only a couple minutes i'm gonna play this one because once again this one is absolute truth and this one is actually it's all in spanish but <laughs> this was around the same time uh oh it says et canada he gave an interview. I think he was in Canada. It was a Canada film festival. Because, you know, he is Canadian. He's, uh... Okay, here it is. No, that's in Spanish. Alright. Well, anyhow... Uh... Play one more clip where he kind of explains it. And, uh... Enjoy. This mighty, mighty wisdom of... Jim Carrey, a.k.a. Jim's, uh, James Carrey, as he was known on, uh, what, okay, why isn't this playing? There it goes. As he was known on In Living Color. All right. When, when Man in the Moon came out, there was all this talk about the process that you went through when you became an Andy Kaufman essential. Did you ever have it in the back of your mind back then that you wanted to share that story in this way that you're getting to do now? Yeah, and I thought I thought I had become Andy Kaufman, but there was no me, actually, at the end of it all. I realized that there was, you know, that this character was uh, making choices to play a character. And, uh, you know, so that's what kind of happened, and that's what Chris found in this interview and in this footage that there was actually a existential, not a crisis, but a discovery going on, you know? There's been a lot of talk in, in the last few days, well, today recently, about... A lot like, of people making sound over here. <laughs> so much of that. That's right. People talking about an interview that you did at, at New York Fashion Week, and you talked about identity, and you mm -hmm. did all these ideas. Do you think that people kind of just don't understand it or they haven't clued in to this whole thing you're talking about of people wearing masks? I think that we're all, you know, we're all trying to uh, add things to ourselves so that we can finally define, our, define ourselves and then everybody will get us and they'll go, okay, that, this is what you are. And then if you actually get there, uh, you will find it so empty that you'll realize that's really not what it's about. It's, it's about not only 
you know, just going with the flow, but it's about not taking it personal, you yeah. know? It's like the difference between house, a house and my house is a world of difference, and it's the my that's the problem, you right. know? So you can do all this without the my involved, you know? You can do it uh, in a way that it's not, life isn't happening to you, it's happening for, yeah. you know, for the good of everyone. It's just a, it's like a, it's a play, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a giant you know field of consciousness dancing for itself and you're here to make me happy and you're to kind of it's making itself happy cool. you know it's like one soul that's how i feel i feel like you know people say well i have a soul you don't have a soul there's no you but i i feel like there is a soul and it includes everything yeah and when you wake up in the morning and you feel like i'm the universe you don't have to reach for the stars you know you can just let life happen yeah and walk through the doors you know we'll have to wrap that sorry thanks very much I'm sorry hey. you've run out of time well listen you've made me very happy so That's, thank you well, for your good. time today man no actually i didn't make you happy All right you're i don't not, know who you're not you've here. made happy but no there's a happy feeling just here. just a cluster of tetrahedrons. Still trying to figure this out, man. a pleasant one. <laughs> pleasant one. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Nice to see Thanks. you. Nice to see you, too. Right. Boom. Man. Talk about freaking... Man. Wisdom. And just getting it, you know? Jim Carrey really, really gets it. You know, how all this is just... Okay, cool. I think I just paused it. Well, I just got a phone call right now. I thought I was going to mess the whole thing up, so I'm glad that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Jim is just woke AF. And um, he's just so amazing. And I'm still, like, studying it. But he's, I think he's just basically saying we're all connected in the universe and like all this is just the matrix. It's all just bullshit. I mean, there are a lot of different theories out there how we're just like a God's dream or we're just like God's dream. Yeah, like God's dream and we're just this manifestation of his thoughts and like and how it's just it's just yeah, it's, it's the matrix if you really, really think about it like. All this is just bullshit, you know, everything. It's just all bullshit. I mean, I still enjoy life, you know, like, and I think that's the most important thing to do in life. Like, a perfect day to me would be spending time with my family, of course. Family's number one for me, spending, making memories with them. And, you know, I love this quote, precious, or wait. Precious moments with precious people. I like that one. Because it is. It's it's really precious. That to me is the most important. But outside of spending time with family, I really love um, jujitsu, uh, working out, um, uh, music, uh, well, playing piano. Lately I've been trying to learn piano. Learning a different language. Spanish, French. I'm mainly learning Spanish, though, but I was learning French there for a while. But I kind of put that on pause just because i got so much shit going on. But yeah, like I would love... And then, you know, I got into new things. I tried archery. Archery is really, really fun. I have a bow and arrow. Uh, shooting guns is fun. <laughs> you know, at the appropriate... Of course, like a place like Target Masters or, you know, like at the appropriate place, like a shooting range. Um... But, uh, yeah, nothing illegal here. Nothing illegal going on here. No need to worry if any cops are listening. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, like, a perfect day would be spending time with friends and family, like, at a barbecue or something. And, I don't know, maybe doing it before or after, but, like, an hour of jujitsu, an hour of working out, lifting weights, you know, running, uh, cycling, swimming... Just exercise. Um, and then an hour of piano, an hour of archery. You know, there's all these fun things you can do. Well, fishing was a huge passion of mine. But I actually did do some fishing a couple weeks ago. It was amazing. Out in Santa Cruz. 
caught a little uh a little uh rock cod. It was a little guy. I threw him back. He was bleeding out the mouth a little bit, but it you know, he was good. But um, you know, just enjoying life and uh you know, so we enjoy life, but at the end of the day, like you know, it's just we're all connected, like all this is meaningless like he's talking about but see he's going even deeper like into the you know the ego and and how there's no Jim Carrey like I understand what he's talking about and a lot of people just think it's crazy talk but he you know that's the thing when you speak the truth and shit people think you're crazy but it's the truth like you gotta really you know you gotta take some psychedelics you know and just try to figure out life you know Take some magic mushrooms. Take an eighth of magic mushrooms. At least a half eighth. At the bare minimum. And, you know, you'll figure out life. You'll definitely, it'll give you a better understanding of life. That's why I'm a huge advocate for people trying it at least once. You know, don't, you know, go doing shrooms every day. I mean, I would never recommend that. But, or DMT. I've never done DMT, but I hear that it's very, very similar. It lets you, you know, open your eyes to what's going on, the universe, and, you know, even salvia. And salvia is over the, uh, not over the counter, but you can just go to a smoke shop, you know, get some salvia, get the strongest, most potentest one they have. I think it's a, what is it, what do they call it, 20X or 20 times, I don't know. Get that, take a big rip of it, hold it in for as long as you can. Just pack it in like a little pipe and just take a huge hit, hold it in for as long as possible, slowly breathe the smoke out, and yeah, you will understand the universe. <laughs> the universe will talk to you, will speak to you, but uh, man, I'm just so proud of Jim, man, so proud of him for spreading this awareness, like trying to wake people up. You know, and it's like, you can you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And that's the bottom line right there. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. But, uh, <laughs> so, you know, Jim, I'm just so proud of him, man. And, and you know, and I'm, I'm glad that I have the technology to play these clips. I really need to get this episode you know, post it on YouTube as soon as possible, and, um, you know, so, uh, my fans can hear it, my millions of fans, <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, to try to wake people up, because life's too short, and, like, I'm, as I grow older, I'm starting to figure it out, and, uh, of course, it takes things like this, like Jim, you know, to help wake me up, and, and, uh, and help me live a better life by understanding, you know, life and what, you know, what's going on. Like, what's really going on here? You know, I mean, shit, man. I just, I want to break it down. But I, I feel like I don't have, you know, I don't have all the proper paint brushes to fully paint you the picture of what he's saying. But I mean, just... Play it over and over and study it. And, you know, you'll really start to get it. You know? Because, uh... Because it's, uh... It's amazing words that he said. They truly are. Every single one of them. I mean... We're here. And it's like, everybody... Like, stuff is happening. I know it sounds stupid, but it's like... But it's true. Like, all this stuff is happening. And it's like... Are you gonna, uh... You know, it, yeah, like, oh, man, see, that's the thing. I just can't perfectly explain it. So I feel like I shouldn't even try, but, because it's like, oh, man, like me, Andrew, you know, I'm 30 years old right now. So, you know, I was given a name, you know, I mean, I was given all these ideas in the, in the uh, education system growing up you know, the American education system, um, I'm just giving these thoughts, I'm giving these beliefs, like, 
you know, I'm, you know, I've been giving a race, you know, I'm half Filipino, half white. My white side is German, Irish, Swedish, I think some Scottish, a little bit of Native American. And, uh, you know, so it's like, okay, I'm given that, you know, and then I'm given, you know, a religion. I mean, I kind of, my mom never forced religion on me. My dad kind of pushed Catholic a little bit, not really, because he's Catholic. But, uh, well, he grew up Catholic. I think he's Christian now, but, and then I was given, you know, then my uncle took me to church and, you know, I, I, to Christian church and it was amazing. You know, I love it. I love the Christian, you know, the Christianity lifestyle. I may not agree with everything that's said with Christianity, but I agree with a lot of it. I'd say more than 80%, maybe even 90. Um, you know, and cause some people are just, whoa, it's like, whoa, buddy, like you're too far out there, you know, like those crazy ass Bible thumpers. But, uh, you know, but the point is, it's like, I've been given all these things, it's like, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like, that's what he's saying, it's a, it's a, what did he say? It's a, something field of consciousness dancing for itself, and that's what it is, like, life, all these people, it's just like the Matrix, man. Like the machines say, humans were just a cancer to the earth. And that's so true. Because look what we did. You know, we started living, we started mass producing. That created garbage, uh, toxic waste that polluted the earth. And, we, and the more that our numbers grow, we keep having babies and babies. The more toxic, you know, waste we're, we're creating. And that's why it's important to have a green earth, you know, go green recycle, all that shit, I'm a firm believer in that, but, you know, what can you do, I mean, at the end of the day, the world's small, and we got billions of people on earth, and it's like, you know, this is just my visionary stream of consciousness, but, uh, <laughs> um, but, I mean, this is all truth right here, and, so, yeah, and I think that this is also just my own personal theory. He's coming to all these realizations because I did hear his girlfriend died, like she killed herself kind of recently, and that was a big deal. So it's probably him, like, just being more accepting of death. And But see, that's what, because I heard when you, let's say I got stabbed in the stomach or whatever, in the chest, when I die, or as I'm dying, DMT actually drips in your brain and makes you accept death, which is super fascinating. Because it drips when we go to sleep, you know, when we uh, hit that REM sleep. That dimethyltryptamine drips, and that's what makes us trip out and have dreams. Um, so it's really interesting, um, all that Jim's saying. And I'm, I honestly feel honored to hear it. I'm proud of him. I'm about to tweet him as soon as I get done with this podcast and say thank you for, you know, help waking people up. Because, you know, he was always my hero growing up. You know, the mask, you know, liar, liar. Like, he was my favorite com comedic actor. And uh, he still is, absolutely. And now, like, I even look up to him even more that he's waking people up. And uh, I just can't wait to post this. That's one of the very few good things about social media <laughs> is you get to spread, you know, consciousness and awareness. So I'm really thankful for that. And uh, yeah, man, I'm just going to end this. I didn't even reach the 30 minute mark, but I said all that I wanted to say in this episode. And yeah, study Jim Carrey's recent interviews, September 2017. And, uh, <laughs> did I just say 2013? Wow. I'm not fully awake yet. Um, 2017, September 2017. YouTube it, research it, and, uh, have a blast, people. And, yeah, peace and love, always. Spread the good. You know, there's too much bad shit in the world. Spread the good. Nothing but good vibes. You know, fuck the negativity. Fuck negativity. 
It's bullshit. Life is way too short. All right. One love, y'all. Okay, now I hit the 30-minute mark. <laughs> All right.